Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Maria Albina Michael and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines RJD Chief Lalu Prasad Yadav convicted by Special CBI Court in fraud scam case at Ranchi. Quantum of punishment to be pronounced on 21st of February. High pitch electoral campaign is in full swing for the third phase assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh and single phase in Punjab. Indian Embassy in Ukraine asks Indians, particularly students, to leave in view of the current situation. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to deliver inaugural address at Energy and Resources Institute's World Sustainable Development Summit tomorrow via video conferencing. Over 173 crore, 42 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far. Recovery rate improves to 97.82%. First of its kind, a two-day global summit on reimagining museums in India to begin today in Hyderabad. In Britain, the prices of petrol and diesel hit new record high over the weekend, an average of 148.02 pence per litre while diesel costs an average of 151.57 pence per litre. And in women's cricket, New Zealand beat India by three wickets in the second ODI at Queenstown. With a new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and to get fully vaccinated and help others, including children between 15 and 18 years, to get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain the Ogas Ki Duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-239-78046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. A special CBI court in Ranchi has convicted Rashtriya Janta Dal chief Lalu Prasad Yadav in the final case of multi-crore fodder scam. This case is related to fraudulent withdrawal of more than 139 crore rupees amount from Doranda Treasury in Jharkhand. The special court acquitted 24 other accused for lack of evidence. The court shall pronounce its final judgment on the 21st of February. The court had sent RJD Chief Lalu Prasad Yadav to judicial custody in Hotwar Jail. Security has been beefed up in the court premises during the hearing of the Fodak scam case. Special CBI Court Judge S.K. Sashi had ordered Lalu Yadav and other 99 accused to physically appear in the court. During the Fodak scam hearing, the advocate present in the court premises told AIR, कि लालू जी को अभी दोषी पाया गया है लालू जी का सजा पर के बिंदु पर अभी कुछ सुनवाई नहीं हुई है सुनवाई 21 तारीख को होना तय हुआ है Lalu Yadav has been convicted in four out of five cases related to the multi crore fodder scam. This scam happened when Lalu Yadav was the chief minister of Bihar before the formation of Jharkhand. The Jharkhand High Court has granted bail to Lalu Prasad Yadav in four cases related to illegal withdrawal of funds from Chaibasa, Devghar and Dumka treasuries. Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI, recorded statements of more than 565 witnesses in more than 15 years in connection with the fodder scam. Meanwhile, the CBI could not trace the six accused till date and 55 accused died during this period. Indian Embassy in Kiev has asked Indians, particularly students whose stay is not essential, to leave Ukraine temporarily in view of the current situation. Indian nationals are also advised to avoid all non-essential travel to and within Ukraine. The Embassy has asked all Indian nationals to keep it informed about the status of their presence in Ukraine to enable the Embassy to reach them where required. The Embassy continues to function normally to provide all services to Indian nationals in Ukraine. The U.S. and the United Kingdom have asked citizens to leave Ukraine at the earliest. Russia and Belarus have been conducting a military exercise in the north of Ukraine. However, the Kremlin signaled it is ready to keep talking with the West about security grievances that led to the current Ukraine crisis, offering hope that Russia might not invade its beleaguered neighbor within days as the U.S. and European allies increasingly fear. 
The US and UK leaders have said not all hope is lost for a diplomatic solution to the Ukraine crisis. However, they warned that the situation remains fragile. In a 40-minute call, Joe Biden and Boris Johnson agreed a deal was still possible despite a chorus of warnings of imminent Russian military action. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will deliver the inaugural address at the Energy and Resources Institute's TERI World Sustainable Development Summit tomorrow via video message. The summit is TERI's annual flagship event and the theme for this year is Towards a Resilient Planet, Ensuring a Sustainable and Equitable Future. It will discuss a wide range of issues including climate change, sustainable production, energy transitions, global commons and resource security. The three-day summit starting tomorrow will be attended by President of the Dominican Republic, Louis Abinader, President of Guyana, Dr. Irfan Ali, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina J. Mohammed, heads of various intergovernmental organizations, and ministers and envoys from more than a dozen countries and delegates from over 120 countries. An 11-member central government team is visiting Rajasthan from today to take stock of the situation in drought-affected areas of the state. This team will assess the damage caused due to drought in the western districts of the state. More from a correspondent. This interministerial team is reaching Jodhpur this afternoon. Members of this team will visit eight drought-affected districts including Jodhpur, Pali, Jalor, Sirohi, Badmer, Jaisalmer, Bikaner and Churu from tomorrow. The team members will also meet with the district administration and Panchayati Raj representatives. This team will remain in the state till February 18. The officials of the state disaster management department will give a detailed presentation about the damage caused due to drought in the state in these districts. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Jaipur. Over 173 crore, 42 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Health Ministry said over 44 lakh, 68 thousand doses were administered yesterday. The recovery rate is currently at 97.82 percent. Over 82 thousand recoveries were reported in the last 24 hours. Over 27,000 new cases were recorded in the last 24 hours. 347 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours. The Assam government has lifted all COVID-19 related restrictions from today except practicing COVID appropriate behavior. Assam has become the first state of the country to do so. As per the fresh order, only the restriction of entry of non-vaccinated people to public places barring hospitals remained in force. The Assam government asked people to carry their vaccination proof. Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma said that with effect from today, compulsory COVID-19 tests at airports, railway stations and hospitals have been withdrawn. He also said that all restrictions, including night curfew, public gatherings have also been withdrawn. He, however, urged people to wear masks and follow other COVID-appropriate behaviour. The Chief Minister said that the decision was taken following the success in intensified COVID vaccination drive. A global two-day summit on reimagining museums in India will begin in Hyderabad later this afternoon. Union Ministry of Culture is organizing the first of its kind summit to celebrate the glorious history of its people, culture and achievements as part of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav, marking 75 years of independence of the country. Union Culture and Tourism Minister G. Kishan Reddy will be formally inaugurating the summit. Over 1,000 museums from the country and abroad will showcase cultural heritage on the occasion, too, for educating future generations as part of the summit. The summit will be focusing on four broad themes relating to architecture, management, collections and education during the summit. The summit is expected to act like a platform for engaging with nationally and internationally renowned museum professionals and share best practices in museology. Participants from countries like Australia, France, Italy, Singapore, United Arab Emirates and United Kingdom will also take part. The summit is open to the public and over 2,000 people have registered so far. Karnataka Home Minister Arga Janendra has appealed to everyone to maintain peace and harmony till the Karnataka High Court decides on the hijab issue. Speaking to media persons in Bangalore today, the minister said that all the students should not have any fear and take part in the learning activities in the schools. He said that everyone must honour the High Court interim ruling and attend the schools without wearing any religious attire. 
He warned that those trying to spread communal agenda in the society and disturb the calm will be dealt with strongly. The Karnataka High Court will in the afternoon resume hearing the petitions filed before the court by Muslim girl students asking for protection of the rights to wear hijab. A three-judge bench of Chief Justice Ritu Raj Avasti and Justices Krishna S. Dikshit and J. M. Kazi is hearing the petition. A high-pitch electoral campaign is in full swing for the third-phase assembly elections and the single-phase polls in Punjab. Star campaigners and prominent leaders of various political parties engaged in public rallies after finalization of the candidates for the five phases in Uttar Pradesh. The door-to-door -door canvassing and virtual appeals to the voters also continue. The poll campaign is now picking up in Manipur, with the party leaders trying to reach out and woo the voters in different parts of the state. Earlier, polling was conducted yesterday for the UP second phase of assembly elections, along with the single phase polling in Goa and Uttarakhand. As compared to over 60% voter turnout during the first phase, in which polling was held in 58 assembly constituencies spread over 11 districts, over 61% voter turnout was registered during the second phase in Uttar Pradesh. While the voter turnout in Goa was 79%, it was 65% in case of Uttarakhand. The third phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh will be conducted on the 20th of February in 59 assembly constituencies from 16 districts. In addition, the single phase polling in Punjab will be held simultaneously. All the 117 assembly constituencies in the state will go to polls together in this phase. Ahead of Punjab Assembly polls, former Union Minister and Congress leader Ashwani Kumar has resigned from the party. Mr. Kumar, who is from Punjab, has sent his resignation to Congress President Sonia Gandhi. He said, having given his thoughtful consideration to the matter, he has concluded that in the present circumstances and consistent with his dignity, he can best subserve larger national causes outside the party fold. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. RGD Chief Lalu Prasad Yadav convicted by special CBI court in Fodder scam case at Rachi. Quantum of punishment to be pronounced on February 21st. High Peach electoral campaign is in full swing for the third phase assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh and single phase in Punjab. Indian Embassy in Ukraine asked Indians, particularly students, to leave in view of the current situation. Prime Minister Nandar Modi to deliver inaugural address at Energy and Resources Institute's World Sustainable Development Summit tomorrow via video conferencing. Over 173 crore 42 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far. Recovery date improves to 97.82%. First of its kind two-day global summit on reimagining museums in India to begin today in Hyderabad. In Britain, the prices of petrol and diesel hit new record high over the weekend, an average of 148.02 pence per litre, while diesel costs an average of 151.57 pence per litre. And in women's cricket, New Zealand beat India by three wickets in the second ODI at Queenstown. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. Hello. Commander of Royal Saudi Land Forces, Lieutenant General Fahd bin Abdullah Mohammed Al Muter, called on India's Army Chief General M. M. Narwane. They discussed ways to further enhance defense cooperation between India and Saudi Arabia. Telangana Governor and Lieutenant Governor Tamilisai Saundarajan today flagged off the historic first ever all women officers offshore sailing expedition of the Indian Army between Chennai, Vizak, Chennai at Chennai Port Trust. Speaking at the inauguration, Dr. Tamilasai said that the country has the second largest military in the world and makes the country strong, safe and secure in all respects. Saluting the bravery of 
the all women officers team she said that the identity and resolve of the indian women is becoming stronger and fiercer vanquishing all preconceived notions and discarding all taboos shattering all possible class ceilings lieutenant general t s a narayanan who is also the commodore of the eme sailing expedition congratulated the women officers for having completed the grueling training for the expedition so the expedition that we have undertaken is one of its kind because this is the first time in the history the army is taking all women offshore sailing expedition you know navy does sailing all the time even army does so so this is the first time this event is happening and we are taking it because we want to promote women empowerment we also want to inspire and encourage the younger generations of the country to feel encouraged to join forces and to take on adventurous activities and the sports of sailing which is picking up big time and now has been included in the olympic as well so the ulterior motive is to promote and encourage more women to be a part of such adventure activities and join forces the total participants are 10 women officers including self but on board we'll be having six members as crew speaking to air major mukta s gautam the leading member of the expedition said that this all women sailing expedition is to inspire the youngsters to take up challenges and move forward in their life the other members of the expedition are majors priya semwal priya das rashmi sangwan arpita duvedi and sanjana mithil and captains jyoti singh malvika rawat shubham solanki and sonal goel Narcotics Control Bureau NCB is organizing in New Delhi today the Darkathon 2022 to find solutions to counter drug trafficking through dark net across the globe. The initiative aims at involving students, youth and technical experts to find effective solutions to unravel the anonymity of the dark net markets. Speaking after inaugurating the Darkathon, Director General NCB SN Pradhan said, "This hackathon is a continuation of the vision of Prime Minister Narendra Modi." who recognized the financial challenges being posed by drug trafficking during a comprehensive review of NCB Our correspondent reports that this hackathon has been organized in three phases starting from today and concluding on the 22nd of April the registration for the darkathon will start from today and will close on the 31st of next month Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council Leh has launched a new scheme Kuns Nyoms for differently able persons in the district Kuns Nyoms meant equal for all fair for all aims inclusive and accessible Ladakh Under the new scheme Leh Hill Council is providing assistive devices technologies to needy people at 90% subsidy Launching the new scheme yesterday LAHDC Leh Chief Executive Councilor and Chairman Mr Tashi Gyalsan and his executive councillors have handed over 28 tri scooters battery run wheelchair walking aids and other aids required for special needs of the individuals launching the scheme tashi gyalsan said the kendra shasit pradesh banne ke baad pehli baar council ke tarah ke schemes ko launch kiya ja raha hai jis schemes ka naam hai kun nyom se jo inclusive sabhi ke liye ek samajik kalyan karne ka ek prayas hai hamare jitne bhi jo weaker section hai jitne bhi jo differently able is tarah ke jo bhi log hai un sabhi ke liye humne ek schemes ka nirman kiya hai tri scooter kehte hain jisko scooter diya hai phir hearing aid hum de rahe hain aur besaki ka battery operated wheelchair bhi hum de rahe hain to ye एक हमारा काउंसिल की तरह से एक प्रयास है कि नए लद्दाख में कोई भी पीछे नहीं रहना चाहिए गलबा चंद के रोक्स में जो है हम गरीबों को चाहे रूरल में हो चाहे सिटी के एरिया में बैठने वाले हो सभी को काम बनाने के लिए हम उनको सहायता देते हैं और साथ ही साथ जो है हाउसिंग फॉर ऑल मकान तक बना के भी दे रहे हैं जिसका भी निर्माण हुआ है After becoming union territory financially empowered with sufficient allocations of budget the hill councils in ladakh are utilizing the funds for welfare schemes As part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrations Ministry of New and Renewable Energy is conducting a 3 day program New Frontiers on Renewable Energy from tomorrow During the program Minister for New and Renewable Energy RK Singh will deliver a special address and interact with students and think tanks webinars on various topics such as role of clean tech startups and climate entrepreneur in providing clean and affordable energy will also be organized 
And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. In today's episode, we remember Assamese freedom fighter Naveen Chandra Bordoloi, who was born on the 15th of February 1875 in the Kamrup district of Assam. He was a prominent leader from Assam in the non-cooperation movement during 1920 to 1922. He strongly propagated the use of khadi and the principle of non-violence through his activism and lifestyle. <laughs> Bordoloi joined the Assam Association and went to England in 1919 with the sole aim of arguing for the inclusion of Assam in the Montagu Chemsford reforms. The visit was a success and Assam was included in the new administrative scheme. In 1920, he joined the Indian National Congress during the Nagpur session. Bordoloi took the initiative of furthering the activities of the Congress in Assam. For his involvement and activism during this time and later again in the 1930s, Bordoloi was imprisoned and underwent harsh treatment by the British. Bordoloi held various important positions in the Indian National Congress. He was the general secretary of the reception committee of the Pandu session of Congress in 1926. Besides his role as a political activist, Bordoloi was also a notable writer and translator. In most of his works, patriotism is the important underlying theme. His dedication, perseverance and hard work earned him the popular title Karmavir. We salute the great freedom fighter. <laughs> We remember freedom fighter Jahanur Ali, a well-known freedom fighter of the Surma Valley, Assam. Jahanur, along with some 300 people, gathered at Kanai Ghat in Silhat on the 15th of February 1922 to discuss the future course of political action. The meeting was convened after permission from the local police. However, the British authorities suddenly intervened in the meeting and ordered the people to disperse within 7 minutes. Without listening to the innocent people, the British police started firing, and in that firing, Jahanur Ali died on the spot. We salute the great freedom fighter. We also remember Satyagrahi Siddeshwar Rajhans who was martyred on the 15th of February 1932 Rajhans belonged to Munger district of Bihar and actively participated in the civil disobedience movement the congress committee of munger had declared 15th of February 1932 as the jhanda satyagraha divas Rajhans joined the crowd which had assembled around the Tarapur police station with the object of hoisting the flag over it The police first warned the crowd to disperse and then opened indiscriminate fire on it. Rajhans was critically injured in the firing and died on the spot. We salute the great martyr. We also remember Gandhian and renowned artist Kalapati Ganapati Subramanian who was born on the 15th of February 1924 in Kuttuparamba in Kerala. He was actively involved in the freedom struggle and was known for his Gandhian ideology. He was imprisoned and later banned from joining government colleges during British rule. Post independence, Subramanian got involved in many streams of art, including pottery and sculpture, murals and toys, and writing children's books. We salute the great Indian. We also 
remember two residents of Delhi who took part in the first war of Indian independence. These include Amir Ali and Sheikh Murad Khan. They were executed by hanging on the 15th of February 1858. We salute the great martyrs. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. भारत के स्वतंत्रता संग्राम में अनगिनत स्वतंत्रता सेनानियों ने अपने प्राणों की आहुति दी कुछ इतिहास में अमर हो गए और कई गुमनाम आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव के अंतर्गत 75 कड़ियों की श्रृंखला में हम उन वीरांगनाओं की बात करेंगे जिनका योगदान कभी भुलाया नहीं जा सकता प्रत्येक मंगलवार परिक्रमा में सुनिए अपराजिता देश की वीरांगनाओं को आकाशवाणी का सादर नमन In today's episode of Aprajita we will bring you the story of legendary Hindi poet Subhadra Kumari Chauhan Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav Hallmark ensures purity of gold Always purchase Hallmark gold jewelry For any consumer related complaints please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll free number 14404 issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs Government of India Jago Grahak Jago At least 4 people died on the spot and several others injured in a multi vehicle accident today at Kopoli near Mumbai in Mumbai Pune Expressway The accident took place today morning when a speeding container truck lost control when its brake failed and rammed into several other vehicles after hitting a Maruti Swift car in which the four deceased were traveling In a major road accident between a trailer and three vehicles that took place in Chutupalu Valley of Ramgarh district on the Ranchi Patna NH33 today four people have died and six people have been severely injured District administration has come to the rescue of the injured according to various sources the 16 wheeled trailer lost its balance on the road and three vehicles were crashed on the spot In Britain the prices of petrol and diesel hit new record high over the weekend according to the latest data the petrol price hit an average of 148.02 pence per liter while diesel costs an average of 151.57 pence per liter both exceeding the previous record set in November 2021 Royal Automobile Club RAC fuel spokesman Simon Williams said yesterday that the fuel prices have unfortunately hit a frightening new high following tensions between Russia and Ukraine In women's cricket New Zealand beat India by 3 wickets in the second ODI at Queenstown Earlier India's captain Mithali Raj won the toss and elected to bat first India amassed a formidable score of 270 for 6 and 50 overs For India Mithali Raj scored 66 in 81 balls and Richa Ghosh scored 65 in 64 balls In reply New Zealand managed to chase the target by scoring 273 for the loss of 7 in the 49 overs Emilia Kerr played the anchor innings and scored 119 runs in 135 balls New Zealand goes two up in the five match ODI series and the two teams now head for a third ODI match starting on 18th of February And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital will have mainly clear sky. The temperature will vary between 12 and 26 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature was 18 degrees Celsius while the maximum is expected to be around 30 degrees Celsius. Chennai is likely to have partly cloudy sky. The temperature will vary between 22 and 31 degrees Celsius. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again RJD chief Lalu Prasad Yadav convicted by special CBI court in fraud scam case at Ranchi quantum of punishment to be pronounced on the 21st of February high pitch electoral campaign is in full swing for the third phase assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh and single phase in Punjab Indian embassy in Ukraine asks Indians particularly students to leave in view of the current situation Prime Minister Narendra Modi to deliver inaugural address at Energy and Resources Institute's World Sustainable Development Summit tomorrow via video conferencing over 173 crore 42 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far 
Recovery rate improves to 97.82%. First of its kind, two-day global summit on reimagining museums in India to begin today in Hyderabad. In Britain, the prices of petrol and diesel hit new record high over the weekend, an average of 148.02 pence per litre, while diesel costs 151.57 pence per litre. And with that, we end the midday news.